All right, so you got your camera. Now you need to know where to set it up. There's a few tips that I can give you that will definitely help out quite a bit. Number one, you got to think about location. Um, obviously, you want to make sure you're putting it in an area where the deer are going to be. It doesn't do you any good if you set it up and it's all ready to go and there's no deer there. So, first off, we're going to cover location and why you pick it out and why you point it the direction you do. Second, there's some common mistakes that people will set up and ends up causing them fits and they have to go back in and change things later on. So we're going to cover both of those. I'm setting up the Tacticam reveal. If you guys have not seen the video on this, check it out right here. If you've never got into a cell trail camera because of the cost involved, they're usually really expensive and the data plans are so high, check it out. Tacticam reveal, super affordable and it does everything that all of the super high dollar things do, maybe even better. So we're going to get this set up. Uh, first thing we're going to go over is location. Now, as you can see right here, I'm set up in a little bit of a funnel. And basically the reason I'm picking this is because I don't have to go into that bedding area and I don't have to go into this bedding area. I'm setting this up in the middle of the summer, so it's probably all right for me to talk loud. I made a bunch of noise with the truck. I'm wearing boots. I'm gonna spray everything down with scent killer when I'm done as best as I can, but you still have to get it in there first to be able to have it set. So doing this in the middle of the summer to get it ready and I'm staying out of that bedding area over there. I'm staying out of the bedding area over here. This is just a natural funnel. Got a little creek on the side over here, and they tend to stay on the side of this. There's a little field over here, a little hay field that they'll come out and eat. And so there's a couple intersecting trails. So that's the number one thing that you want to look for is the amount of travel that's happening in that area. Now the next thing you want to think about is which direction are they coming from. I've got this camera set right now on a 30 second delay. It's going to take a picture, it's going to wait for 30 seconds before it takes another one. It's got a 96 foot range. If I have it pointing all the way down this trail, as soon as that deer gets into 96 feet, it's going to trigger, and then the next 30 seconds it's not going to take a picture. So it may not trigger again by the time he gets through to the camera. So what I actually prefer to do is have it kind of quartered just a little bit to the trail. Rather than having it pointing down the trail like this, I'm going to have it turned off to the side just a little bit. That way they'll trigger it when they get maybe 20, 30 feet away. You don't want to have it so close that you're just getting blurry antlers and things like that. So I'm going to have it about 15 feet off the trail, just slightly turned just a little bit. Another bonus is any deer hit this field out here, say they're not cutting through here, they hit this field to eat, they come out of the bedding area off to the side. I'll still probably be able to pick them up if they get close enough. That's your big thing as far as location. Now another thing, I've actually got some HD200 Ionic Minerals set from Hightower Products. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch that right here. It's an awesome mineral that keeps them coming throughout the year. I've got that set up over here too, and we'll run it like this until we get close to deer season. Then I'll be forced to pull the minerals out for legal reasons, but we'll still keep the trail camera up. So now the next key is, what are some common mistakes people make that they have to go back in and readjust? And probably the number one thing is not looking for overhanging branches or branches up in front that are going to catch wind and start moving back and forth and drive you crazy with your cell phone getting pictures all night. I'll start looking for branches like this, you know, little things like that that are set out there. You can't clear out the entire field, obviously. So just look for the big things that you think are going to pick the wind up the most or overhanging branches like that, that might slowly creep into your imagery. You know, you wanna get that stuff out of the way. Okay, and another tip that you wanna do is make sure that you do your best to cover your scent. I've got knee-high rubber boots on, and I've got scent killer right there. I'm gonna get this hung up. I'm probably gonna to have to use a T-post on this because I don't have the right tree right where I want it. So I'm gonna drive a T-post into the ground, make a little bit of noise, make a little bit of stink but then I'm gonna go through and spray down everything. The camera, the pole, everything, all the area that I walked through, spray it down as good as I can to help eliminate my scent as much as possible. That way there's less of a chance of them smelling me and saying, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be out here anymore. So we're gonna to get to getting this set up real quick, Tacticam reveal, and uh, as soon as we get some good pictures coming through, I'll uh, put another video together showing the results of what we got. Should be exciting. And uh, that's a good thing about these cameras. They're so affordable that I can finally afford to get multiple cameras that send it to my cell phone. I'll be able to set these up out here and have them going straight to my phone so I don't have to keep coming out here stinking up the area as we get closer to hunting season. All right, so we'll get to it and hopefully we'll have some pictures for you guys before too long.